Welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal, and this is episode number 20, the big 2-0. And today, we're going to continue with, I guess, the trend that I've been starting and continue learning more about module development. Today, we're going to look at the install file in a module and how you can use that to create a database table. And after that, we're going to, in the next episode or two, we'll look at how to create a form and then populate that database table and run a few database queries on our created table. One thing to keep in mind is in most cases you really don't need to be creating database tables that often unless you're really building something custom that that actually needs it. You should make sure you you really look at it and see if you can build it with the existing tools, you, you know, using Drupal content types and the field API and fields in general. And you may not even need to create a database table to store the data. Uh, I guess it's better to reuse what's already available rather than rewriting it yourself. And so just make sure you actually take inventory of that and see if it actually fits your scenario better than building something from scratch. In this example, it's something you could easily do with a content type and some fields or, or you know, in act, all actuality, even probably a web form. But we're going to use it as a demonstration to show how how the, the database schema can be created. And so we're going to start by creating a new custom module. So I'm in my modules folder here. I'm going to create a new folder. Um, I'm going to call this form example because we're going to eventually be creating a form here. So I'm going to create a form example.info file. A form example.module file. And if you've been following along, this will be a new one in the daily dose of Drupal form example dot install. So we're going to we're going to open these up here. So in our info file, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a name, form example. Give it a description. The core is going to be 7.x. The version is going to be 7.x-1.0. And that's all we really need for the info file. So I'm going to save that. We're going to leave our module file blank. I could put in you know, the, the file block or some comments here, but we'll just leave it blank. And the install file is the next step here. And there's a couple of things you're going to need to look at when you're creating an install file. The first is hook install. And this can be useful if you need to do something when your module is installed. Maybe it's insert some entries into a database table. Maybe it's um, create a couple variables, things like that. There's also a hook uninstall. And you can also see there it has some C also on here. So hook schema, we're going to talk about that in a second. Hook enable, hook disable, hook uninstall. And there are things you're going to need to take a look at if you need to perform actions when a module is turned on, turned off on a website. Hook schema is actually where your database table is going to be defined and when you install your module this database table will then be created. We're going to create a very simple database table uh, to begin with but one thing you want to note is in hook schema has a lot of documentation here. It talks about how to create one and you can go from there, but there's also a schema API page on api.drupal.org, and this goes into much more detail on all the available options in Hook Schema and how you can use that to create database tables, as well as 
some database functions and methods. So take a look at that if you need to look into creating database tables. We're going to go ahead and start, as always, by just grabbing this code and dropping it into our install file. Okay, and we're going to call this database table. This is where we define the name. I usually like to define my variables first, but it's just a preference thing. And you can give your database table a description. And now we can create fields. So I'm going to call mine FEID uh, form example. So I take the FE off and just put underscore ID. You can call it whatever you want. And it's going to be the primary identifier. And it's a serial type, which means it's going to basically auto increment for you, starting at one auto increment up, of course. We want it unsigned, we want it not null, so we can keep all that. We're going to um, go ahead and define an integer field. We'll call this my number, and we could just say a field for storing an integer number. We wanted an integer. We'll say we want it unsigned, not null. We can leave all this stuff uh, blank. We can create a, a var car field, which we can set the length on. And this is good for just simple text fields. So we'll call this my text field. Let's call it my text. Now we'll go my text field because we'll also create a, a larger text area here. Say it's a field for storing short strings of text. And we'll give it a length of 50. Not null, true, we'll default it to a blank string. And take a look at all these different options here. The description's just the description for the database, the type of field you're going to be creating. In this example, is an int, which is storing a number value with a non decimal number value. The type of var car is going to store text, which is just a variable a variable character field. We're saying the max length on that is 50. We're saying we want it to be not null. Um, we'll also do a little bit longer field here. Call this my text. We want the type on here to be just text. We'll say we want not null to be true. And we can just leave it at that. You'll notice that this is just one big array item that defines this entire table. Inside the fields in the, or the fields key here, we have a whole bunch of subarrays. Each one of these is a field or actually a column in the database table. After you define the fields, you can then define some various indexes. You can see there's a couple here that are, ex there's examples from the node table. Let's say in our example, we want to define an index on the my number field. Uh, we could go ahead and call this whatever we wanted. So we can go ahead and put form example, my number or you could just put my number it's what you want to call the index and then in here you define which columns you want to set the index on so in this case we want to put an index on my number if we had any unique keys that we wanted we could define those in this example we'll skip it if we had any foreign keys let's say we wanted to reference the node table in a node id or in this case a, a node revision table 
uh, the users table with a user ID. You can take a look at that example. Foreign keys are just another layer of nested arrays where you specify which table you're going to uh, have a foreign key to and which columns are going to map across the tables. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And our primary key in our example is our serial uh, field here, serial column, and it's FEID. So we're going to make our primary key FEID. So that's all there is to building a simple hook schema. Like I said, you, there's, it's really hard to show all the various options. You really need to look at the schema API. Uh, there's a, bu a whole bunch of example modules out on Drupal.org. You can just open one up, open an install file, and see how they're creating the database tables. And you know, look through all the different examples on the schema API documentation and uh, other Drupal example modules. So now let's go ahead and come in here and install our form example module. Assuming I didn't mess anything up, things should go smoothly. And our module should now be installed. I'm going to hop over to my database here. And I'm going to look for form example. Let's see if this is going to. And you can see right there, I have form example. You can see I have, there's an FEID, my number, my text field, and my text. Um, yeah, and it's very, very simple. Not a lot to it, but it is rather confusing if you're just getting started with Drupal because there's a, a lot of nested arrays inside that hook schema. But once you get the hang of it, it really is fairly intuitive and it makes sense on how to build database tables inside your module. When you uninstall this module, Drupal will go ahead and uninstall any tables that your module created so after you disable it and then, uh, okay, I'll step back. Once you disable the module, we'll go through this very quickly. When I come through here and disable the module, and I save this, and I r refresh this, you'll notice that my form example table is still here. However, in order to actually get it to completely go away and destroy all of the data in that table and drop the table from the database, I have to physically uninstall it. Once I uninstall that module, that database will be dropped, or that database table will be dropped, and none of that database data will exist anymore. So that's it for today. Hope you learned a little bit on how to create database tables inside your Drupal module. We'll continue next time with a form API example and actually populate some data into this table. Uh, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal.